Okay, good morning. Dr. Abigail, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me, Dr. Abigail? Yes, yeah. po, sir. Okay. I think in one minute, we're going to start now our activity. Shall we start after a minute, Dr. Ola? Yes, po, sir. Ah, okay. Sige po. Ayan. Once again, good morning everybody. Klaro po ba ako sa inyo? Yes po sir. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Ilocos Training and Re Regional Medical Center, especially the, the Department of Ophthalmology for making this uh, activity possible. Uh, especially to our the department head of the of the department, Dr. Richmond Chiazon. Of course, to our uh, very uh, uh, pre, the pretty and handsome our residents of the Department of Ophthalmology. Thank you so much. And of course, to our participants for today for making this possible, despite of the activities, because you know that uh, uh, everyone is busy for the. Uh, mass uh, vaccination of COVID-19. So at least uh, we're very glad because uh, many of you were able to make it for today's activity. Now, this activity actually uh, aims to emphasize the uh, uh, importance of uh, protecting and taking good care of, of, of the eyes. And of course, we would like to encourage the, the public to be aware of available means of restoring a lost eye, eyesight and uh, to solve, uh, of course, to give value of organ donation. And of course, uh, today's activity, we have two speakers from the Department of Ophthalmology. Uh, they'll be discussing to us the first, uh, uh, the primary eye care, and the next one is uh, a lecture also about eye bank. So without any further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our First speaker for today's activity, uh, she took her doctor of medicine at Our Lady of Fatima University and finished her postgraduate internship at the Carino Med Med Memorial Medical Center. And she's currently a second year resident at the Department of Ophthalmology of the Locos Training and uh, Regional Medical Center. Hello, good morning po. So I'm, let me allow to share my screen. So, nakikita po ba yung screen ko? Yes po, Dr. So, good morning po. I'm Dr. Frances Abigail Tesoro, a second year resident of the ITRMC Ophthalmology Department, and I will be discussing basic primary eye care lecture. So, these are the objectives of this lecture. The first is to educate the primary healthcare workers of the common eye diseases. Second, for you to identify each diseases which can be treated at the primary healthcare level. And those that should be referred at a, uh, to an ophthalmologist immediately. Then third is for you to manage non-emergency cases at the primary healthcare level. So this is the outline of my uh, short lecture. So in 2004, through the Administrative Order 179, the guidelines for the implementation of the National Prevention Blindness Program was created. 
created. Then in 2005, through the Department Personal Order 2005-0547, um, creation of Program Management Committee for the National Prevention of Blindness Program was created, which also included the following subcommittees, which are refractive error or low vision and childhood blindness and cataract. So uh, this is the picture of the prevention blindness and visual impairment through primary eye care intervention. So uh, diseases are classified according to um, if you can treat them immediately at the primary health care level or uh, you should, uh, are you, um, you are, um, kung kailangan nyo bang i-refer immediately and case finding and referral to us. So first, we will discuss the treatment group. So these are diseases that are um, that can be managed at the primary health care level. So this, uh, this is just a rundown on the diseases that are included in this group. So let's start with conjunctivitis. So conjunctivitis could be caused by viral, pwedeng virus, pwedeng bacterial, yung cause ng um, Conjunctivitis. So first, for the viral, signs and symptoms include inferior palpable conjunctival follicles. So pwede kayo may makitang mga ganito pag inivert nyo yung eyelids. Then tender palpable preauricular lymph nodes, watery eye discharge, red edematous eyelids, uh, itching, tearing, gritty or foreign body sensation, history of recent upper respiratory tract infection, then um, viral conjunctivitis often starts with one eye, then involves the other eye. So treatment for viral conjunctivitis, you um, always advise thorough hand washing and avoid using common towel. So kung i-advise nyo sila, advise nyo na lang na gumamit ng tissue, tapos itapon na agad, then thorough hand washing. We um, usually naman viral conjunctivitis is self-limiting, so kahit wala namang uh, medications na ibibigay, it's okay. So next, for bacterial conjunctivitis, so signs and symptoms of bacterial conjunctivitis includes purulent white yellowish discharge, parang ganito, nagmumuta yung mga patients of mild to moderate degree. So conjunctival papillae, um, Chemosis or preauricular lymph nodes are typically absent but is often present in gonococcal conjunctivitis. So like uh, foreign um, like viral conjunctivitis, um, patients can also present with foreign body sensation, sensation and itching that is less prominent. So treatment for bacterial conjunctivitis, um, advise them to wash their faces frequently and put antibiotic drops four times a day for a week. So usually we give um, topical antibiotics such as tobramycin in combination with um, um, steroids like dexamet um, dexamethasone. So you can um, prescribe it as every four hours for a week. So next one is gonococcal uh, newborn conjunctivitis, more commonly known as ophthalmoneonatorum. So uh, patients can present with conjunctival injection or namumula yung mata tearing, mucopurulent or non-purulent discharge, so like this, chemosis and eyelid swelling. So for the treatment, you can clean the pus or the discharges with damp cotton ball. Then uh, you can apply antibiotic eye drops or eye ointment. Usually we give erythromycin eye ointment two to three times for a day then or five to seven days. Then you can uh, refer the infant and the mother immediately to our institution for further evaluation. So next one is vital spots. So uh, vital spots and night blindness in children. So um, this is under serophthalmia. So serophthalmia refers to the spectrum of ocular disease that caused by severe vitamin A deficiency. So kung mababa yung vitamin A ng um, mga patients natin, they could present with um, night blindness or bitot spots. So bitot spots are collections of desquamated or keratinized epithelial cells. So ito, uh, that appear as triangular patches or foamy whitish opaque deposits 
typically located at the Boulevard Conjunctiva near the Limbus at 3 or 9 o'clock position. So they are more commonly as seen temporally. So mas nakikita sila sa may temporal side ng um, conjunctiva natin. So um, for the treatment of this, you can give vitamin A capsule. So I know uh, vitamin A capsule are readily available sa mga RHUs natin. So you can give 2,000 IU um for on the day of consult, tapos uh, the day after, then after two weeks. Then advise to, um, the patients to take vitamin A rich foods such as cheese, eggs, oily fish, um, mga fortified low fat spreads, milk and yogurt, liver and liver products. So next one is subconjunctival hemorrhage. So subconjunctival hemorrhage, ito parang namumula yung mata. Our bright or dark red patch on the eye provide our bright or dark red patch on the eye. So usually they are asymptomatic, walang symptoms, and can be unilateral. So provided that the patient is clear, um, walang blurring of vision and no history of trauma, you can treat them. Uh, you can um, advise them to do cold compress for the first 24 to 48 hours, then do warm compresses thereafter. So you could also advise to give um, um, ascorbic acid and advise them to eat vitamin C rich food or, um, or the like. Then refer if the bleeding, you can refer if the bleeding continues or spreads. But usually subconjunctival hemorrhage is self-limiting. So next one is conjunctival foreign body. So minsan nalalagyan ng foreign body yung conjunctiva natin. So usually we remove it with a cotton swab, yung cotton buds or soft cloth. Then we give antibiotic eye drops such as tobramycin. So this one you can um, give lang yung plain na antibiotic eye drop every four times a day for three to seven days. Next is eyelid foreign body. So for eyelid foreign body, patients may feel, um, may have a feeling of pressure or discomfort, sensation that is something in their eyes, eye pain, extreme tearing, pain when looking at the light, excessive blinking, and eye redness. So for the treatment, you can remove the foreign body by averting the eyelid or wiping it with cotton swab, then refer then you can always refer them if unable to remove or if the vision is affected. So um, you can also start them now with antibiotic eye ointment or eye drops, um, plain, uh, plain antibiotic eye drops four times a day for three to seven days. So usually parang etong nasa picture, pag mga ganyan yung foreign body, most likely meron na din mga corneal abrasions yan. So usually binibigay lang namin is plain antibiotic eye drops. So, next one is her jolum or sty, or more commonly known as coliti. So, there is uh, two types, pwedeng internal or external her jolum. So, for the signs and symptoms, this includes acute eyelid lump, eyelid swelling, visible or palpable well-defined subcutaneous nodule, nodule in the eyelid, such as the one in the picture. Then um, for the treatment, we usually give, um, I, we usually advise warm compresses three times a day for 10 to 15 minutes. Then apply antibiotic um, eye ointment such as tobramycin, pestexamethasone eye ointment um, three times a day for five to seven days or until the sty or the quality resolves. The, if the lump hardens or become painful, you can always refer them to us for further evaluation and management. So next one is mild hyphema. So usually, uh, mild hyphema are secondary to uh, trauma or the patient has history of trauma. So you can uh, place the patient at um, hyphema is the accumulation po of um, blood in the anterior chamber. So nagkakaroon ng blood if there's a trauma, nagkakaroon ng blood dun sa anterior chamber ng mata natin. So you can place the patient at a high back rest, then cover both eyes to rest them. So dapat laging may eye shield. Uh, you can start antibiotic eye drops if there is eye redness or redness of the conjunctiva. Then test the vision and the level of blood daily because it could uh, re-bleed um, or it... Kasi kailangan natin ma-monitor if it's um, 
the bleeding is um, decreasing or if it's um, um, worsening. If refer if the bleeding increases or if the vision is affected. So, pag mga ganitong cases, kahit mild high FEMA pa rin sila, uh, you could um, you you could always refer them to us kasi pwedeng tumaas din yung intraocular pressure for us to start din mga um, appropriate eye, eye medications for them. So, we're done with the treatment um, for the diseases that you could treat at the primary healthcare level. So, um, let's move to the immediate referral or after initial management, you can refer them to the nearest ophthalmologist. So, these are the diseases included in this group. So, let's start with corneal foreign body. So, corneal foreign body, you usually remove uh, corneal foreign body under the slit lamp. So, under the microscope namin, tinatanggal yung mga corneal foreign body. So, at the primary health um, healthcare level, you could try to remove it with a cotton swab or flush it with clean water. But if um, hindi mo siya ma-remove with that, you can refer them to us. So, you can start na po... Um, Antibiotic eye drops, plain antibiotic eye drops such as tobramycin, moxifloxacin, and the like, then refer them to us for proper um, management. So next one is scleritis or scleritis or the inflammation of the sclera that can present as a painful red eye with or without vision loss. So since this is painful uh, at the primary health or at the RH level, you can give analgesics, then refer for treatment of uh, treatment with steroids and work up, work up for probable cause to us. So next case is corneal ulcer. So a corneal ulcer or keratitis is an open sore on the cornea. So yung cornea na sinasabi natin is uh, this covers the iris and the round pupil. Parang siya yung pinakasalamin ng mata natin. So, a corneal ulcer usually results from an eye infection, but severe dry eye or other diseases can also cause it. So, common ito sa mga, lalo na sa mga farmers natin, yung mga nalalagyan ng palay yung, accidentally nalalagyan ng palay yung mga mata, um, yun, um, common sa kanila to. So, what you can do is to apply topical antibiotic, plain lang po yung walang uh, steroids. So like tobramycin, moxifloxacin, every 30 minutes. Then uh, you could also start systemic antibiotics, uh, play, uh, put an eye shield, and then refer immediately to us. Okay. So next one are acid or alkali burns of the eye. So uh, ang immediate na... Um, management for alkali or acid burns, yung mga nalagyan ng um, alkali or acid sa mata, you should irrigate them um, immediately with kung ano yung meron sa inyo, clean water or sa RH level, yung mga IV fluids na meron kayo, you, um, you wash the eyelids uh, continuously for an hour with at least 2 liters of clean water. Then you can start na po with uh, antibiotic eye drops, then refer them immediately to us. So next one is severe high FEMA. So just like the uh, mild high FEMA, um, you refer them immediately to us. Uh, so patch their eyes, then refer them to us. So yung mga severe high FEMA, yung mga wala na kayong makita, puro dugo na lang, refer them immediately to us. So next one is eyelid margin injury. So common to lalo na madaming nagmomotor sa atin. So may mga madaming vehicular crash. So for eyelid margin injury, so clean the wound with betadine or antiseptic or clean water. Then you could start analgesics or antibiotic eye drops or eye ointments. Then patch the eye and refer uh, them to us immediately for uh, proper suturing of the eyelid margin. So, um, iba kasi yung pagtatahi namin sa, mga, sa eyelid margin to make sure na naka-opposed pa rin sila um, properly. So, pag mga um, lacerations involving the eyelid margin, you refer them agad to... Um, an ophthalmologist. So next one is corneal perforating injury. So uh, for the management, avoid touching the eye. So usually, lagyan yun na lang ng eye patch or um, eye patch, then refer them to us. So you can start antibiotic or analgesic tablets. Then 
patch the eye gently without pressure. Dapat hindi nadadaganan yung eye and put eyelid cover, then refer them immediately. So recently, madami kaming mga ganitong cases. Accidentally, natutusok yung mata with ball pen and the like. So if may mga makita kayong ganitong cases, refer them immediately to us. Usually, uh, we repair these cases at the operating room. So, last for this is the uh, uveitis. So, for uveitic um, cases, usually they present, uh, they present with blurring of vision, eye pain, and photophobia. So, you could give analgesics for the pain, then refer them immediately for evaluation, workup, and management. Next is glaucoma. So, uh, glaucoma is um, can present with pain, eye redness, blurring of vision, colored halos around lights, frontal headache, nausea, and vomiting. So, um, usually, glaucoma is a subspecialty case. So, pag mga may makita kayong mga ganito or you are suspecting glaucoma, you refer them immediately to us. Uh, kasi ikakategorize pa namin if it's open or it, if it's closed. So, for us to give a proper uh, management for the patient. But you can give analgesic tablets for pain, then refer them to us immediately. Next one is retinoblastoma. So retinoblastoma is a tumor in the retina. Retina, yun yung parang pinakabalat ng mata natin sa likod. So usually seen in children. Usually they present as parang... Um, Puti yung pag iniilawan yung, mo yung mata ng bata, puti yung nakikita mo, imbes na orange, like the one in the picture. So, makikita nyo yung left eye ng bata, puti, pag nag-shine ka ng light. So, pwede yung i-refer immediately sa amin kasi uh, itong mga ganitong kaso, they need um, immediate treatment and management. So that's the last um, disease under the immediate referral group. So next one are case finding and referral. So when you identify any of these um, uh, diseases, you can refer them to the nearest ophthalmologist because usually um, surgical yung uh, management for these cases. So, just a rundown on the diseases included in this group. So first is error of refraction. So you need to test first the visual acuity. So uh, you can use Snellen's chart, uh, charts that are usually meant to be used at 20 feet distance from the person being tested. So yung mga may uh, pagpupunta sa inyo, may error of refraction. Alam ko madaming mga Snellen's charts sa uh, RHU lab, sa RHU, so pwede nyong gamitin yun to test for your uh, visual acuity. So if um, in, uh, malabo yung paningin ng patients, pwede nyo silang i-refer to us uh, for us to prescribe or to refract the patient para ma-prescribe namin ng, ng, ng eyeglasses. Then next is terigium. So ito yung parang may kulapot sa mata. Uh, usually, um, lalo na sa mga uh, persons or uh, patients na laging exposed sa hangin, sa arawan. So yun, sila yung common din na nagkakaroon ng terigium. So terigium is a wing-shaped fold of fibrovascular tissue arising in the interpalpebral conjunctiva. Ito. And extending into the cornea. Usually nakikita sila sa nasal part. So... Patients may present with irritation, eye redness, decreased vision. Pwede kasing mag-encroach to sa uh, uh, gitna ng mata natin. So uh, they could present with decreased vision. Uh, usually, patients din can present with foreign body sensation, parang may puwing. And pwede ding asymptomatic or walang uh, nararamdaman yung pasyente. So if you uh, may makatch ka yung terigium or... Ganitong case, you can refer them to us so we can uh, advise them if for surgery na ba yung mga mata nila. Next one is cataract. So cataract is defined as any opacification on the ice crystalline lens. So like yung nasa picture, makikita nyo yung lente ng mata natin puting-puti na. And any of these changes can lead to degradation of the optical quality of the lens that can cause visual symptoms. So symptoms may include blurring of vision at distance or near, glare or na sisilaw, difficulty seeing in low light situation, 
loss of contrast sensitivity, loss of ability to discern colors, increasing nearsightedness or changes in refractive status. So, pwedeng mag-present ng ganyan yung pasyente. So, pag may mga um, cases kayo na nakikita ng ganito, cataract, should, lalo na kapag bilateral, tas hirap na hirap na uh, yung mga pasyente, you can refer them to us for proper evaluation ng cataract nila and management. So, next is uh, any corneal opacity. So, if may history of trauma or um, previous infection yung mga pasyente, tapos uh, malalim yung pwedeng magkaroon ng peklat or scar yung cornea nila, so you can refer them to us. Um, I-discuss mamaya susunod na lecture yung corneal donation. So, pwedeng kasing yung mga ganitong cases, tapos okay pa naman yung sa posterior pole or posterior ano ng pasyente, pwede natin uh, silang i-refer sa ibang foundation for corneal transplant. So pag may mga makita kayong mga ganito, pwede nyo silang i-refer sa amin. Next is um, squints or strabismo. So this is any misalignment of the eye that often occurs in children who otherwise completely normal or with other disorders. So, ito yung mga nagbabalag or nagduduling na pasyente, pwede nyo silang i-refer sa amin para ma um, thoroughly check namin yung mga pasyente. If um, squints or strabis, mas biglang nagduling, nagbalag, tapos sa matanda na, usually uh, they are uh, caused by stroke or any vascular problem. So, pag mga ganun, uh, pwede nyo i-refer immediately sa amin para ma-refer din namin sa internal medicine, lalo na pag matatanda tapos biglang nagkaroon ng duling or balag. Next is um, entropion or ectropion, tapos yung mga abnormalities of the eyelid. So, ectropion meaning uh, outward turning of the eyelid. So, parang itong unang picture, nakalabas yung eye, uh, eyelids. So, then, itong second picture is entropion, yung naka-inward turning of the eyelids. So, pag mga ganitong cases, uh, usually rinerepair namin kasi if not, um, hindi sila merepair, pwede silang mag-cause ng um, exposure keratopathy. Um, that, could, could, that could lead to corneal ulcer. So, pwedeng um, yeah, pag may mga ganito kayong cases na nakikita, i-refer nyo sila sa amin para ma-manage namin appropriately. So next one is eyelid um, abnormalities of the eyelid. So yung ptosis na sinasabi namin or drooping of the eyelids, yung hindi nila na open yung eyes nila, pwede yung i-refer sa amin para ma-manage namin ng uh, ma-evaluate ma at mas ma-manage namin ng thoroughly. So that would be all. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, um, I would gladly answer them after the next lecture. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Abby Gatosero, for that uh, very informative uh, lecture about primary care. And of course, um, we have learned a lot about the different diseases of the eyes and of course its management. So later on lang po yung question po natin, Dr. Paula, after the next speaker. Yes, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, so, yeah. so good morning. Our next... okay. good. Yeah, good, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So I'll be taking over the uh, moderator duties from Sir for this second part of the lecture. So uh, I would just like to welcome everyone, uh, the participants uh, for this uh, lecture today. So let me introduce myself first. I am uh, Dr. Rich Monsiason. I am the chair of the Department of Ophthalmology at ITRMC. I'm, yes, and I'm also the, the section chief of external diseases and cornea and program coordinator of the cornea retrieval unit. So first of all, um, this advocacy lecture is uh, geared for, uh, for you, for those who are in the grassroots level, so that we will increase your, uh, uh, our awareness. Now, we have a program that, that is existing here in in our province that uh, uh, that aims to um, 
to increase the the awareness in corneal donation and transplantation and uh, to dispel the traditional or religious beliefs and common misconceptions ng mga tao. Now, you can also help us do that and be and to encourage others also to to donate their corneas kasi um, there's really a, a great disparity between yung supply and demand. Uh, we really see a lot of patients na nangangailangan ng cornea and we have uh, no supply. So as of now, uh, only the iBank Foundation of the Philippines is the operating um, iBank here in the Philippines serving uh, the needs of the uh, nationwide of all the doctors uh, doing transplantation. So, um, so masyadong talagang mahirap kasi kukunti lang talaga ang supply. So, um, this lecture uh, aims nga to, to increase the awareness na para maging mas open tayo sa concept ng, ng, ng donation, uh, especially those uh, who are um, who can donate uh, their cornea or pledge to donate their cornea when, when the time comes na na aalis na sila dito sa mundo. So, um, so we hope that uh, this will inspire others like your, yourselves no, to be advocates and champion the corneal donation in your own respective areas and units after this lecture. So our speaker for today is Dr. Uh, Aluri Bumel. He's, she is a graduate of uh, Far Eastern University College of Medicine and an incoming second year ophthalmology resident here at ITRMC. She will be discussing about the status of uh, corneal donation and eye banking in the Philippines, its history and current situation, uh, some, uh, some basics on uh, cornea and corneal trans transplantation and, uh, foreign, uh, or, and frequently asked questions on corneal donation. So without further ado, let me give the floor to Dr. Raumel. Dr. Thank you for that wonderful talk. So before I would start my lecture, sorry. before I would start my lecture, I would like to share a video on corneal donation. The Iloka Screening Regional Medical Center is a partner of the IBAC Foundation as one of its corneal, uh, cor corneal retrieval units in Northern Luzon. So before uh, I present my lecture, I would like to show you a video. I'm Manolo Kimpo. I'm now 68, 68 years old. By profession, I'm a lawyer, but I became totally blind sometime mga eight years ago. Corneal blindness is the number four cause of blindness in the world and in the country, and the number five cause of visual disability. It can be due to so many things. It can be congenital, it can be as a result of infections and trauma, uh, as a result of complications of previous surgery, or even genetic predisposition. Siguro po nagkamahalay ako, ano na siya, blurred na yung nakikita ko, light perception na lang siya, tsaka white na yung cornea. Eh hey, dati ano eh. Eh, kahit nung magdasal lang eh, mag, ano, ako, eh, magbabasa ako ng, ano, eh, ng yung mga prayer. Hindi ko mabasa eh, kahit may salamin ako eh. Isang kahit, kailangan naka, ano, lang, eh, may nakatutok na plus light. Ganun. Corneal blindness is one of the most difficult forms of blindness to treat simply because of the scarcity of transplantable corneal tissue throughout the world. In 1994, a group of like-minded uh, souls got together in order to try to address this problem by establishing the IBAN Foundation of the Philippines, whose main mission was to put up a functional, efficient eye banking system in the country. Because only through an eye banking system can there be hope to try to address corneal blindness. So how does one become a cornea donor? If one passes away in a hospital, for example, then the next of kin simply has to tell the attending physicians or the nurses that their loved one was a donor, was a card-carrying donor, or that they wish to donate a certain part of that person's uh, body so that others may make use of it. But this doesn't usually happen. 
usually it has to be the hospital to ask the next of kin because you know at the time of grief very few really remember that their loved one was a donor so the hospital will ask would you like to donate any part of your loved one whether it's the cornea or any other part of the body uh, so that that person that part of your of your loved one whether it's the corneas the kidneys or any other part so that that part may live on in others as a legacy to your loved one wag po sila matapat na mag ma-inform maging aware sa mga ganito pong programa yung mga may kaya naman po mag-donate ano po bukas sa loob po silang tumulong kasi po hindi po nila alam kung gaano kalaki yung impact na may tutulong nila sa isang tao na kahit hindi po nila kakilala pero buong buhay naman po magiging grateful sa kanila I'm encouraging people to like sabi ko nga minsan to donate Corneas, to be aware, kasi ang kulang siguro is the awareness ng mga tao on the necessity to donate cornea. Kagaya ako, kung ako lang may good cornea, kung at ako eh kailangan i-donate ko yun, bakit hindi kaysa mabulok lang naman yung cornea na yun? Ito ang hindi na realize ng mga tao eh. Na, halimbawa ako yung mamamatay na lang, eh bakit hindi ko ibibigay yung cornea ko? Bakit hindi ko ibibigay yung ibang organs ko para mapakinabangan ng ibang tao? Nagkaroon na ako ng, ano, ng chance na maupirahan at uh, sa tulong ni Dr. Padilla. Eh, gumanda. Ngayon nakakabasa na ako eh. With uh, eyeglass. Well, I glass, pero nakakabasa na hindi kagaya nun. Kahit may eye glass, hindi pa rin ako nakakabasa. Mas madali na po yung daily activities ko, pagbabasa, pagko-computer. Nakapag-bike na po ako ulit. Kahit na medyo, hindi pa rin po, medyo takot pa rin po. Pero mas, ano na, convenient na po, mas comfortable na po ako gumalaw. Yung mobility ko po, nag-improve. <laughs> Dito na si Alvin. <laughs> Papasalamat din ako because my cornea was provided by the eye bank. So because nakakita lang naman ako through the courtesy of the eye bank foundation ng Dr. Padilla, eh, sa akin, that's the best that uh, ever happened to me again. Those of us who can see take so many things for granted. Playing with our nieces, our grandchildren, uh, seeing the faces of your children, watching television, reading, we take all of these for granted. But to somebody waiting in the shadows, they cannot take these things for granted. And um, the cornea is such a small tissue, as big as a fingernail. But donating this can mean a world of difference to somebody waiting in the shadows. It is a miracle for them. Miracle for somebody blind, simply from this small act of ours or of our loved ones. So please, I really encourage everybody to consider being a cornea donor and being a hero for others and making a difference, transforming the lives of those who are waiting to see again. So I hope you all appreciate and have seen that video. And I hope you have been uh, interested about corneal donation as well as its benefits for our patients, as well as to us uh, in the medical field. So let me begin uh, with my lecture. Wow. 
Uh, can you guys uh, see my um, PowerPoint, my presentation? Yes, Doctor. Thank you. So for today, um, my lecture is entitled, I Can Make a Difference. Uh, this would be a short uh, lecture on corneal donation, as well as an introduction to the IBAC Center of the Philippines, as well as the Santa Lucia uh, IBAC Center. So without further ado, the DOH IPRMC is a part or is working together with the IBAC of the Philippines as one of its retrieval sites of donor corneas in Northern Luzon with the project entitled Give the Gift of Sight, which entails corneal donation and the Corn and IBAC Foundation of the Philippines. So corneal blindness is one of the major causes of blindness in the world. This affects people of all ages, about young and uh, elderly uh, ages, with a high demand of corneal transplant throughout the world per year, and with only about 100,000 to 150,000 corneal transplants uh, uh, performed, only about one out of 80 corneal blind people in the world is able to see again. So there is a very large uh, difference between the necessity or the need for corneal donation and the number of corneal transplants performed. So there is a need to increase the awareness of this um, wonderful project for giving eyesight to those who cannot see. So corneal opacity is the fourth cause of blindness globally, which follows other diseases such as your cataract, glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration. And it is also for the fourth cause of low vision in the Philippines other than the error of refraction, cataract, presence of diabetic retinopathy, and our corneal opacity ties with glaucoma. And also, did you know about 56,000 Filipinos have low vision due to corneal opacity? So corneal transplant is one of the ways of we can uh, give hope to other people. So this is a picture of a corneal transplantation. We replace a disc-shaped segment of an impaired cornea with a similar shaped piece of a healthy donor cornea. And in corneal transplantation, which is uh, as compared with other types of transplantation in the body, we do not use immunosuppressive agents, and yet we do not see much rejection. So it's a proof that the immunity of the eye is the typical. In corneal transplantation, the corneal donor cornea fails to express transplantation antigen and the recipient interferes with the ability of the immune system to bring destructive immune effectors to the site. So this is a picture of a donor cornea on your left. And once the donor cornea has been transplanted, this would look like this on the right. So I would like to introduce to you the IBAC Foundation of the Philippines, which was established on October 16, 1995. It is a non-stop, non-profit, non-government humanitarian organization which op operates the Santa Lucia International Eye Bank of Manila. This is also an ISO certified uh, foundation. And the Santa Lucia International Eye Bank of Manila, a recognized, internationally recognized eye banking facility for quality corneal or eye tissues for transplant, research, and education. So this organization was founded uh, by Dr. Robert Caro, a New York-based retina specialist who donated 25,000 US dollars to equip the eye bank and requested the facility to be named as Santa Lucia because Santa Lucia is the patron saint of the blind. So if you are invest, uh, interested of their projects for uh, corneal donation, or other uh, for, uh, eye tissue research, you may uh, visit them at this location at the second floor of the Centro Ophthalmologico Jose Rizal building at the Philippine General Hospital in Taft Avenue in Manila. So this organization has its mission and its vision. Its mission is to transform lives through restoring sight and setting the highest standards in international eye banking and the ambition to be a recognized world leader in international eye banking and sight restoration. They have different functions. Firstly, they function for procurement. 
This would involve donor identification, the medical history, physical assessment, coronal excision, or the eye retrieval. Next would be the processing and preservation of the different specimens. We utilize uh, preservative media to ensure viability of the cornea. And trained technicians and ophthalmologists evaluate the tissues to ensure the quality. Next would be the tissue evaluation or tissue processing. So all the tissues or all the specimens will undergo cell counts. Next would be the serology. This would entail uh, assuring the safety of the tissue, such as uh, the blood uh, specimens of each patient would be tested for HD, H HEPA B antigen, HIV, hepatitis C antigen, and syphilis. And lastly, for the distribution of such um, corneas, it comes as a first come first served basis. So they go in line when, uh, when patients or the hospitals would request for a cornea to be transplanted, uh, they go in line and it comes in a first come first serve basis. So an eye tissue and eye and cornea removal is performed shortly after death. So about uh, the viability of the tissue would be better if refrigerated, if not, it would be viable about 12 hours. If refrigerated, it would be at 20 hours. So what then happens to the corneas donated? So when the corneas have been retrieved, they would undergo the uh, different processes, tissue processing, evaluation, as well as sero serology. And if the cornea would be suitable for transplantation, it will be then um, given to the different uh, hospitals or institutions that would need uh, the corneas. And if not, if the, the tissues are not suitable, this would be then used for education, research, and training. The IBAC Center of the Philippines is affiliated with uh, a lot of institutions in the Philippines, whether private or government, and uh, not only in Manila, but also at the outskirts and uh, also in the provinces, such as ITRMC. Okay. Then moving on, what are, uh, we have some frequently asked questions on uh, corneal tissue donation. So firstly, who can be a donor? So um, since, uh, since the eye has a typical type of uh, immunity, nearly everyone can donate, unless if there are other diseases such as the uh, uh, Im immunocompromised state or infectious diseases, these patients are screened. If they are not, uh, if they are or not um, suitable as a donor. Next, so another of the uh, most uh, asked questions about corneal donation is that is corneal donation disfiguring? So the answer here is no. Uh, when the cornea is retrieved from a patient, it is only replaced with an eye cap similar to a contact lens. So as when the patient closes his eyes, you won't notice that the cornea has been retrieved. So this is a picture of a patient, uh, of a donor who has, a, uh, who has an eye cap. So you would not uh, notice a difference between a patient who has given or who has donated a, a cornea or not. Next. Uh, do recipients know the identity of the donor family? So donations are made anonymously and it is a customary to honor the confidentiality of the donor and the recipient unless both parties agree to reveal the identities. So if uh, the um, recipient and the donor would like to meet each other, they could do so. So this is a picture of a donor family and the recipient um, meet up. So they would uh, be talking with the IMAC Center since they are the ones who are responsible, responsible for the meetup. So the donor would be able to meet the family of the recipient. And will the donor's family pay or receive any fees? Since it is a donation, no. Uh, it is also illegal to buy and sell human tissues and organs. Next would be, how does the donor family benefit from the cornea and eye tissue donation? So donation is frequently uh, comforting for a grieving family. 
It is a gift of renewed life and can honor the donor and bring solace to the survivors. It also gives them a feeling that the death of a relative is not wasted and that the deceased is alive through another person, like a continuation of life of the donor. So the recipient can also be visiting the donor's week visit if they wish to, uh, if they agree. Uh, so this is a picture of the donor's um, week visit. So there are also celebrity corner donors that you might have uh, familiar uh, or you are familiar with. And I hope this lecture has uh, uh, encouraged you to become a donor. So if you guys want to be a donor, uh, it could be easy. Either when you apply for a passport, a driver's license, or through the iBank Center, you can pledge. So if you are interested, in uh, uh, being a coronal donor, you can uh, fill out a pledge form card. You can check on the link posted here. You can take a screen capture and you may sign your name um, and always carry the card with you. But still, you have to discuss your decision with your family. And if you are pursuant on doing a, a very wonderful um, a uh, wonderful, wonderful decision. Uh, you can also encourage others to become donors. So uh, this is uh, a, a contact number of uh, the iBank Foundation of the Philippines. If you wish to pledge your eyes to become a cornea donor, or if you are referring a possible cornea donor, you can also take a screen capture of this contact numbers. So, organ and tissue donation need and hope. Sa Pilipinas po, marami ang nangangailangan, maraming naghihintay, at maraming tutulong. Kailangan lang po natin ipahiwatig sa kanilang lahat. Nawiling po tayo at um, marami pa tayong matutulongan. Uh, that would be all for my lecture for today. And before I end, uh, I would like to show you a short video on uh, um, the IBANG Center of the Philippines or Ivan Foundation of the Philippines about those who have uh, donated their corneas. And I hope they will also encourage you as well as um, give us hope that we can give better eyesight for other people. Thank you. Paul. Have a good day.
So uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Umel, for that uh, very uh, informative and inspiring lecture. Uh, the floor is now open for questions. Um, Dr. Umel, I have a question. Um, for someone who, who wants to donate, do you need to have a pledge card prior to donating your uh, may, maybe uh, your next of kin? If, if someone who meron kang ano kilala na gusto mag donate, no? uh, do you need to have a pledge form so to donate? Yes, for the for proper identification, for the. But uh, kunyari, ano siya, uh, marami dito yung result of accident, ano? So, hindi naman actually yung, yung pledge card, uh, hindi naman parang uh, requirement, di ba? Uh, yes. if, if someone, kunyari, uh, your next of kin, okay, for example, uh, dies, no? So, tapos uh, you, you want to donate. So, hindi naman requirement ang, ang pledge form, right? Yes, but it's uh, not if the family decides to, to donate, then they can readily donate. So how yes. how will they uh, donate? They, they, do they have to call that uh, iBank Foundation of the Philippines? Knowing na ang layo-layo ng iBank sa, sa, sa place natin. So, paano yun? We can coordinate po talk with the nearest uh, to our doctors, even in the LGU. They can do. They can help us contact the nearest uh, uh, retrieval units in their sites. Po uh, for in La Union, they can contact ITRMC for that matter, for the retrieval of corneas or other IT issues. Po doc. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, to add that to that, no. Uh, ITRMC has been um um tawag nito, has been designated as a satellite high bank, right? So we uh, we can uh, retrieve or we can actually we, we can do counseling for those who are willing to donate, and also uh, we can do uh, our own harvesting of tissue that we uh, will send to Manila for processing. Uh, another question. Uh, now that we are in pan in a pandemic, um, do do they uh, do, do they um, test for COVID prior to uh, harvesting or uh, transplantation? Yes, po, doc. Uh, all uh, all donors are checked prior to retrieval of the cornea, po, doc. They are all checked for uh, if if they are COVID positive. Usually, uh, these uh, specimens are rejected. Any more questions from the participants? Very ano lang po to, informal. We can. Um, you can ask and question uh, for our two speakers. Uh, first, Dr. Tesoro, who uh, spoke on, uh, on the primary eye care, and Dr. Umel for uh, the cornea donation lecture. Hello. Uh, Dr. Yes. Shadron, I'm sorry na wala pa ako yung ano ko signal. Uh, wala akong ano video. Ayaw. Uh, sir, uh, yes. Yeah. Especially to our participants regarding this activity, ano? Kasi ang alam lang mga public ay hang pwedeng ma-donate lang ay yung mga kidneys, yung mga heart, yung mga tissues and bones. Ngayon, we have the, the program of the Department of Health, which is the uh, Philippine Organ Donation and Transplantation Program, especially uh, dun sa ano, Philnos, Philippine Network for Organ Sharing, that we have this activity na you can now donate your cornea. So, kanina yung lecture natin kasi ang ganda, no? Kasi first yung how to manage uh, eye care and then the next one is uh, yung, yung parang we are increasing the the awareness of the public about the importance of organ donation, especially corneal donation. Now, that is uh, yung we are restoring the lost eyesight. So, mean to say yung mga taong may corneal problem, 
don't don't lose hope because that will now be a given uh, you know to recollect it already through organ donation so corneal donation po yan so katulad kanina if you're very much willing to donate your cornea meron pong sinabi kanina doktora Umel na uh, there is such as a card po ba yung doktora na uh, may bibigay sa kanila and then they have to fill it up and then everything is we should uh, dapat na pag-usapan niya sa buong pamilya na na hindi basta basta talaga na namata na yung yung pasyente ano uh, ikaw mismo ang uh, ano na uh, magdi-decide mismo na so hindi basta basta po yun so talagang donation of uh, to any part of our body is very talagang critical ba na pag may sabihin na hindi basta-basta bibigyan mo na kagal i-donate mo ka. Pinag-uusapan talaga po yan. So this activity no, is uh, in, uh, letting the public na, especially sa ating mga participants, to encourage the, the community that there is such thing as an activity like this, a program of the Department of Health. Yan, no? uh, Dr. Shasa. Yes, uh, I agree, uh, sir. So it's important po talaga na if a person um, decides to uh, donate, uh, or pledge his eye uh, pag uh, namatay na siya, uh, to, to talk about it with their family para kumbaga uh, hindi magugulat yung pamilya na na may pledge card siya, magdo-donate pala siya, pero hindi naman alam ng, ng, ng mga magulang o next of kin. Kasi usually, kahit na meron, naman siya, meron siyang uh, pledge card, pag ayaw ng, ng pamilya, hindi, na, hindi, pin, hindi namin pinipilit. Yes. Okay? So it's important na, na habang buhay yung pasyente na willing siya mag-donate, na pag-usapan na nila ng pamilya na gusto niya na yung, yung, mag- yung will niya to donate his eye uh, would be ano yung bang susundin parang ganun yes. uh, pag namatay na siya so Doc, may important tanong siya important yan sir yes. Doc, may tanong lang ako no kasi sa organ donation sa lima kidney pero uh, mayroon tayong master listing din pa sa corneal donor master listing sa mga recipients um kumbaga yung yung mga naka na yung magre-receive pa doctor kasi dapat kasi uh, sa uh, no but, kasi ang ginagawa sa PODTP yung, for example if i'm going there is a recipient na magpapa kailangan niya ng kidney transplantation so uh-huh. hindi pa, halimbawa yung natatay ko ay for undergo ng kidney transplantation at meron akong donor meron siyang donor at ako yon for example kasi dapat doc sa PODTP sabi nila hindi ba sa basta na kahit anak ka or relative na gusto mong ibigay yung kidney mo doon sa kanya dapat naka naka master listing muna kung sino numbering po doc yung mga recipients for example kung number 86 yung tatay ko na for ano uh, kidney transplantation kat ako ang anak niya na magdo-donate eh uunahin pa po do yung number before na number ng tatay ko ganun din po ba sa ano corneal donation ah uh-huh. Sa, sa corneal donation, meron din pila actually. Ah, okay. May pila See. din sa, sa iBank. So, pero uh, minsan may merong uh, priority. Uh, like kunyari, um, kunyari sa atin ang galing yung cornea. No? Kasi kumbaga, isang lahat ng mga, mga centers na tinatawag natin na ah, okay. corneal retrieval unit na katulad natin. No? Kung nakapag, ano tayo, kunyari nakaharvest tayo dito, tapos hindi naman natin kikip yun lalagay natin sa iBank sa Manila kasi wala naman yes, tayong storage oh. facility no? so pag meron tayong siyente dito bibigyan tayo automatic kung ba sa atin na yung isang sa dalawa kasi dal- do, two corners ang mga harvest natin no? yung isa doon will be automatic uh, for us kung sinong nag-retrieve so kung yeah. meron tayong okay. patient we will get a priority from doon sa nakapila Kasi ah, okay. tayo isang sa atin nang galing eh. Pero yung isa okay. natin na na na, na cornea would be uh, used ilalagay dun sa pool para dun sa pila na, na yun. Gano gano ng sistema. Ah okay doc. Thank you doc. Noted po. Okay. Uh-huh. 
Ay, may tanong. May tanong. May tanong. Ay, Doc, may tanong dito yung office mate ko. Ay, Doc, sir. Doc, Soro, may tanong yung office mate ko. Yes. Ang sabi niya, kasi sa baryo, ano, halimbawa, meron siyang, di ba, usually, pa may sore, sore eyes, di ba? Ay, nagkosuuso. Yung best milk daw ba ay nakakatulong sa paggamot ng mga ganyang bagay. Kasi, I'm sure, meron pa rin yung gumagawa. I, I, I have seen one. And with this also na, may ganun talaga yung, yung breast milk ng mother, pinapatak niya mismo directly to the pasyente na mata. Meron po bang effect ng breast milk sa mga sore eyes, doktora? Thank you, sir. Ang ganda ng question na eh. I, I appreciate na na-brought up yung topic na yan kasi uh, contrary to popular demand or ano, hindi po nakakatulong bagkos nakakalala pa uh-huh. ng uh-huh. eyes yung pagpapatak ng breast milk dun sa mata natin. So, better yet, magbigay na lang ng mga antibiotics, eye drops, kesa magpatak po or magpa-check up na lang sila sa nearest na ophthalmologist. If you are not sure, para ma... Um, mabigyan na lang namin ng proper treatment yung mga patients. Pero, uh, yun, we discourage, hindi po namin ini-encourage ang pagpapatak ng breast milk dun sa mga eyes natin. Uh, thank you, Dr. O, ganda. If there are no more questions, sir, maybe we can end na. Thank you. Doctor, last word na lang. Uh, maraming salamat po sa Ilocos Training and Regional Medical Center in behalf of our, sa DOH, our regional director. Maraming salamat po kay Dr. Richmond Siazon. Siya po ang chair ng Department of Ophthalmology sa ITRMC. And of course, sa ating mga napakagandang mga speakers, no? kasing ganda ko, si Dr. Abigail Tesoro and of course si Dr. Aluri Umen, maraming salamat po. At sa lahat po ng mga doctors po natin, mga mababait sa ophthalmology department, yung mga pasyente po natin dyan na gusto magpa-check up, may bago po tayong building sa ITRMC, doon po sa second floor. At nandun po yung mga, mga mababait at mga matatalinong doctors po sa ITRMC who are there to give you the best service delivery po sa, as far as uh, may problema tayo sa mata is concerned. So thank you so much so once again, Dr. Richmond. No, sana uh, marami pa tayong time no, to, to work with as far as the program for blindness prevention program is concerned po sa DS. Thank you so much po. Sa mga participants, maraming salamat sa ating mga public health nurses, sa ating mga nurse deployment program nurses, sa mga iba't ibang mga uh, Uh, LGUs po dito sa La Union. Of course, sa ating mga hepus po, maraming salamat. At sa lahat-lahat po ng mga nag-attend po sa uh, activity nito, na maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. So, thank you so much. Thank you din, sir. Thank you. Photo of po. Photo of uh, Aluri. Can you, can you take it? <laughs> Wala akong ano. Camera. Okay lang daw. Kaya dalas po. <laughs> for documentation okay. processes. Please turn on your cameras for a picture taking of. Okay. 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 So one, two, three, smile. Okay, next group. One, two, three, smile. Okay. And One, one more pop. One, two, three, smile. And one, two, three, smile. Okay. Okay. Salamat. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.